What? <laughs> <laughs> Welcome everybody to episode 159 of uh, the China Show. You mind scooting up a little bit this way? What's going on with your yeah, table manners falling, over here? Falling off. It's because the table moved. Yeah, for whatever reason. Um, this is a mobile table, everybody. Yeah. Go that way. No, go this way. It's like a mobile home. Yeah. There we go. Uh, it's not bolted to the floor, in case anyone was wondering. Today we've got... Th- <laughs> His favorite people were super Sure. Concerned. Today we've got quite the show for you. Um, and uh, No, I'm working on it. You can entertain the crowd. We're going to be discussing this ridiculous situation of a young boy being oh, yeah. arrested for slapping a statue. But, of course, we've got a lot of other interesting topics to cover. Uh, it's uh, not just... Yeah. I mean, that's obvious. I think you guys probably caught on. Sometimes the video or the episode has like the most, you know, eye-catching topic or whatever, because that's a big part of what we're talking about. But there's so much more important stuff we're covering. Yeah, of course. Um, and we will be covering that in a second. I do want to say happy um, Friday to everybody. Thank you for everyone that's joining us live. Mm-hmm. And uh, I hope you guys are having a uh, an awesome time gearing up for the weekend. Yeah. Um, and I just want to prove that we're alive. So I'll say Charles Womack with the first super chat says, poor kid, he just needs to study more Xi Jinping thought. <laughs> and you know what's funny is that we're seeing less dictator worship for older dictators in China and being replaced with Xi Jinping. Of course. So there's a lot of actually like some museums have been removing Deng Xiaoping stuff. Yeah. And then replacing with Xi Jinping. I mean, Jinping Deng Xiaoping stuff. says a lot of things that don't go along with yeah, Xi Jinping thought. Very Let's true. put it that way. This is very true. Anyway, how's the uh, media pack? Is uh, it there? It's coming along. Okay. It's coming along. All right. Good stuff. Um, how's chat doing? Turd Ferguson says, you think you're touch- you, you, you would think touching Mao would give you cancer. <laughs> well, the people that worshipped mangoes certainly didn't think mm-hmm. so. Yeah, that's right. Mao gifted mangoes to some peasants. Remember very that? interesting thing. Yeah, yeah. You should look that up. So uh, let's first of all start out with uh, what's happening in China and the new stuff. So let's go directly into what's new. This is where we talk about what's new in China, specifically uh, all over the place. Why is that taking so long to copy? Uh, it is what it is. It's a couple gigs. Don't worry about it. We don't, they don't need to see behind the sausage factory. Yeah. Um, they don't need to be weird. This is like not, it's just hang out. It's fine. Yeah, I not know. No big deal. Anyway, we have prepared quite the show for you today, like I said. And uh, there's been some... Let's big it up. Well, no, seriously, there have been some incidents in the last week that have gone completely viral in China. Yeah, some good pop culture um, stuff. So we got a lot of good stuff in store for you there. we got some funny things coming up. Uh, Definitely got to start out with the funny stuff because it yeah. gets a bit dark. Yeah, that's right. We don't want to start with dark. No. If you start with dark, then what are you? Right? I don't know. Might Driving well pop, a Nissan. Might as well pop a beanie on and <laughs> you know, yeah, exactly. claiming all the meat's gone. <laughs> exactly. Uh, anyway, mm-hmm. uh, thank you to China Secret Police for gifting the show memberships to everybody. Mm-hmm. And Turd Ferguson says, would you like me to be the cat? Oh, he does, does he? That's pretty awful. Why didn't you play it? I can. Again, I just got to bring it up. We're, we're starting with a couple of super like chats here because we're waiting for the media to copy over. Classic Logic says, Temu, Timu was auto-downloaded onto my phone last month. What? I think you have a virus. What kind of phone do you have? <clears throat> Uninstalled right away, but I think this might be the main reason why it's the most downloaded app. Thoughts? That must be dug into. Yeah. Uh, David Lopan, thank you very much for gifting memberships. This Yum Cha segment of the China Show is brought to you by Ricochet Burgers. Wow, so good from Quella 1203. Wow, so good. Oh, do we have a new soundbite today? We can. No, tease? we don't yet. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. I, thought you, I thought you did that. Yeah, no, it's exporting and doing its thing. Sorry for us not being so prepared today, guys. We had a lot. We're, we're very prepared. We had a lot to. We had a lot to put together, and it's all put together. It's just copying over to the streaming machine. Is yes. it done yet? Um, have a good show. Thank you very much. We're almost done. Okay. Uh, China Secret Police, if you're unable to find a job in the PRC, there's always overseas police work. Yep. We're having margaritas at Fujo Service Station near you. <laughs> <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, TMD says, been drinking, Matt? Waterfalls. I have a lot of uh, beverages to drink today. And Rubiar Egagon, thank you very much for your first Super Chat. Welcome to the show. Uh, we're about ready to begin. We have a big, huge media pack today, and that's why it's taking so long to copy over. Yep. Just give it give it a quick, quick segundo. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a catastrophe. It, it really is. It really <laughs> is. And I blame George Galloway for all of these these technical difficulties we're having. Yeah, currently. absolutely. Um, it just so happens that the network decided to be very slow in copying today's media pack over, which again is much bigger than usual. Yeah. Um, so you will you will be in store for a very very good episode for sure. And guess yeah. what? You know what's awesome about this? What? None of this will be in the final episode. I'm gonna cut you all better of this cut out. it all out. <laughs> so, uh, we need some 
fun sound bites there. <laughs> okay. What's well, sad, sad trombone? <laughs> yeah, because we're going to cut it out. Okay. It's it, sad. Yeah, it certainly yeah. is. All right. How's that uh, going? Still still coming along, you know? Yeah, it'd be easier if you just put it on a USB stick and walk over and copy it over. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> it'd be easier to try to practice throwing it into the hole. Yeah, over exactly. And over. It'd be faster. Okay, it's done. It's done, is it? Yep. Okay. Imagine that. Okay. The package is much bigger than usual. <laughs> it is. Okay. okay, guys, enjoy this clip. Let's see if you uh, find this as funny as we did. Okay, so maybe we could set this up. We're finally starting. Yeah. Okay. Um, so uh, what's going on here exactly, Seamilk? Well, as you can see, there is a man mid-flip. Okay. <laughs> and oh, should it... we just play it? Let's just play it. Okay, let's get us out of here. Let's play this. So, <laughs> oh, you, you slowed it down? Okay. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> oh, wrong way. <laughs> strong. No, I mean, you have to be to be able to do flips like that. For sure. I admire the mm -hmm. fact that he stuck with it. For all you listeners that are not seeing this with your own eyes, mm -hmm. uh, there's a very strong Chinese man in a performance, like an opera performance, uh, who's doing backflips where his pants have gone down to his ankles yeah so his pants fell down yeah but he continues to flip i mean wouldn't be i would literally quickly just pull him up and then yeah continue. Or, or even take him off at that point because they're just tripping you yeah exactly <laughs> but he keeps going i like his little slip that's why i slid it down yeah oh yeah because when he ends this out y'all get a second it's kind of like something's wrong here but he still, he still does it yeah. and slips a little and he's still going. Yeah. But then as he exits here, you can see he like trips over. He's like, whoa. <laughs> it's like, what is that? He didn't feel a cool breeze. The knees, did he feel his yeah. knees in the breeze? Get your knees in the breeze. Yeah. How's it like this? Knees in the breeze, brother. <laughs> your knees in the breeze. Anyway, um, uh. I don't know if you guys saw, but a, a while ago, I, I had a fairly popular video about China painting the mountains green. Yeah. Okay. And I showed how in some rural areas and even in some cities, they paint the grass green, they paint the trees green, they yes. paint the mountains green. And it's a lot of people are like, oh, that's just hydro seeding. You know, we do that around. Yeah. It's no, they actually use paint. Like, you know, there are tins of paint left over that people took photos of, of like oil based paint. Like <laughs> it's not normal. No. Um, and it's all trickery. And it's because, you know, um, in China, certain areas and certain companies and whatever, they're given a mandate. They're like, you have to do this and you have to have this ready by a certain amount of time. And when it comes down to that time when they're supposed to present, I don't know, the fact that they've beautified the city or something and it's not beautiful because everything's dead still and they haven't figured it out, they have to come up with a plan. Okay, so here's another one of those examples and this one's kind of extreme and uh, I thought it bears looking at. <laughs> Okay, so um, let's take a look at this. Again, I'll get us out of here so you can see what's going on here. Now, uh, what you're looking at here is a field full of stones stuck onto rebar. Yeah. It's a so, lot, too. It is. It's thousands and thousands. I mean, imagine the amount of time it took wow. to do this. Wow. Why not just plant real crops, by the way? Because <laughs> the amount of time it took to do it, you could grow real-ass yeah. crops. Because if you haven't guessed it by now, these are supposed to simulate crops, like yeah. cotton or something, right? Because sure. look, this guy in the video, he's like, what is going on here? He stopped. He's like, look at this. He's got his car there. He gets out. He says, what is this, right? Look at this. <laughs> And you can see, he's like, oh, like all these stones on top of rebar here. And then he even asks in the video, it's like, what, what's, the, what's going on here? Like, what are these for? It's like, does anyone know? So then there's a message. This was a, a company, this was shared along with the video, okay? Where he obviously sent it to someone and asked, like, right. which just means like, what's the meaning of this, right? Right. Um, so I just ran this, this message through Google Translate for all of you to see. And uh, so he said, what does it mean? And someone uh, replied, it lets the satellites take pictures of things on the ground 
and it makes makes it look like the land's not deserted, yeah. right? He says the construction site is idle and has not been started. The soil field is not allowed to be exposed, and the surrounding area is covered with dustproof net. This is used to pretend um, that it's planted with shrubs to deceive satellites and aerial photography. So, you know, as you would expect, you can see the mountainside in the background there also has the shade netting on it. Yeah. To make it look like there's grass growing or flowers or shrubs growing on the mountains. So obviously there's been something here where the local government has been, I don't know, given a piece of land, but it has to have been used for agriculture. They must, yeah. you know, they were told to do something with it. Yeah. But because they never got around to it and there's going to, they don't want to get caught out. So they've done this. Yeah. It's, it's fascinating. And there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff going on right now about repurposing land for mm -hmm. agriculture slash cutting trees down. There's all kinds of stuff. We're trying to wrap our heads around it because we're, we're trying mm -hmm. to stay away from rumors. Yeah. Uh, but there's a lot of bullshit that goes down in China. And you can see it in this clip here. Yeah, yeah. It's very um, typical. It's kind of fake it. You know, a lot of things it, in yeah. China are fake. A lot of things in China are a facade. And this, of course, goes into everything, including things like GDP numbers and that yeah. sort of thing. So, yeah, yeah. you know. Uh, let's move on from this ridiculous clip. A little absurdity there. Mm -hmm. um, and, well, let's see what we have next. Oh, yes. Let's see what's going on here. So, mm -hmm. China Daily is uh, has been pushing this AI metaverse stuff. Oh, China has thrown so much money into the metaverse, mm -hmm. which of course has failed. Yeah, like who talks about the metaverse now? Does anyone talk about the metaverse? I mean, I think even China's stopped. But, yeah, yeah. But this, this is like last year or yeah, whatever. But. There was a huge <laughs> surge where they were spending billions and billions on yeah. metaverse things. Well, the reason is, is the idea that well, the, the metaverse is being pitched as an alternative to world to the internet. Mm -hmm. So if China can get on the, you know, get on the ground running and then get ahead of everyone and kind of overtake and impose censorship laws and mm -hmm. control the media inside of there. They've controlled, effectively controlled the future internet narrative. Yeah. But nobody, no one gives give a shit about the metaverse, right? Yeah, exactly. So they've dumped, they've dumped billions of dollars into this metaverse propaganda, basically. Yeah. And uh, they put, there's pumped out content after content. And it's something we never even brought up in the show. And we yeah. feel, felt like it was good to uh, show you one of their pilot episodes of this. Yeah, yeah. So this is where they were talking about metaverse. So let's take a look. What are they? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay, all right. I think we can just leave it at there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what is... In China, I'm Fox. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. Hey, Box, how's it going? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I did do a whole video about ridiculous English names that sure. you find in China. But yeah. I just found this doubly funnier. Like, yeah. it's one thing to have a ridiculous name, but it's doubly funny to be in a show called Unboxing China. I'm Box. I mean, it's if you're like, going to unbox China, you better kick her out of the country. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Unbox China. Yeah, 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 yeah good yeah. boy. That's a good boy. I just thought that was... At, get us out of there so people can see it. Just oh, revel see, box. in this. I mean, it's just... And they kept going with this. Oh, yeah. There's a, it's quite a few episodes of this Unboxing China uh, starring Box and Nancy and, <laughs> and their friends. It's actually really cringe. So Yeah, it's, it's mostly we boring. Can, it's like, oh, yeah, we can bring some of this up in the future. It's but, definitely you know. 5G AI. But yeah, like... it is. It is. Totally. It's this. Oh, man. I just thought it was so, so delicious how it just like introduces herself as Box in a show called Unboxing China. Mm -hmm. Anyway. Now remember we, we told box. you guys about Bottom Gun? You know, bottom Gun! You know, Top Gun, China's Top Gun knockoff, which was called Born to Fly. Yeah. Okay. Now, remember they were about to release it, but the, the Top Gun Maverick had just been released and it was yeah. doing the rounds and everyone loved it. And it was a big box yes. office. It was a box office. It was a box office. Yeah, box <laughs> office smash hit. Okay. <laughs> and... Uh, China had just put together this Born to Fly thing to kind of knock it off, right? It was a knockoff of Top Gun. And when they screened it, everybody panned it. Like all the critics, oh, all yeah. the audience were like, this is so this bad. It's terrible. It's embarrassing. You're going to embarrass China. Because it makes, it's a copy of Top Gun. Yeah. 
which we named Bottom Gun. Mm -hmm. And it it's so poorly copied. If it was its own IP, it'd be one thing, but it's yeah. a copy. It makes it so much worse. And the CG effects were so yeah. terrible. And it was just absolutely absurd and ridiculous. So, you know, the, the original Top Gun from like 1986 or whatever is way better. Yeah. Um, oh, gee, it's not even comparison. I mean, quite honestly, like a movie, silent movie from the 20s is better than that. Yeah, oh, yeah. This and is schlock. Yeah, it's terrible. So, of course, they pulled it at the last minute and yeah. they've been redoing the whole thing basically you know obviously they've redone all the cgi yeah they've taken out all the very embarrassing Kinda like bits. sonic you know how they had to pull it and then yeah. redo everything from the ground up. yeah because it looked terrible it's like that i mean but there was a positive result with that yeah i don't know about this anyway it's, fi gun. it's finally slated to be released again yeah okay so now they're like okay now it's going to be released so they're hyping it up right yeah Here's a display for it, I it guess. It's like kiosks, right? Yeah, yeah, this is a kiosk, and I'm guessing it's at uh, a movie theater or something. Yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Anyway, let's take a look at this. It's kind of interesting. I'll get us out of here again, because here you've got a, a display. And I guess we have to explain to everyone, what they've got in this display is like a, a, a fighter jet popping out of a display here and it's Whoa, i almost thought it was real <laughs> and the fighter jet is their new f-35 knockoff that they've got in china um and then they've got a pilot there a chinese pilot he's dressed in pilot uniform he's got his badges on and everything okay so but if you look closely um if you peel back the china badge just slightly <laughs> <laughs> it's an Why? American flag. Why? Yeah. I mean, even the kiosks were knockoffs of American I know. stuff. I know. You're knocking off Top Gun. <laughs> bottom and, Gun. Yeah, Bottom Gun. You've got an American military uniform there, and you just stuck the Chinese <sighs> badge over the American flag. It's, <sighs> it's embarrassing. <sighs> Stop. It's embarrassing. Don't do it. Fix it. Make your own stuff. Don't be such a freaking copycat yeah i mean it's not like china doesn't have their own uniforms i know just use one of those i know how many are there surplus everywhere you can go buy it on the road i know it's ridiculous Gosh, yeah, anyway it. moving on from that little embarrassment yeah, here. <laughs> oh, okay this has gone viral around china this is the most ridiculous thing ever this is the biggest thing in china at the moment yeah um and it, of course guys we tell tell you what's new in china it's mm -hmm. not just political stuff yeah and what happened was and this is very simple to set up yeah a guy was in line mm -hmm. in a city long queue waiting long for, some, queue food waiting for some food in a small city outside of shanghai mm -hmm. right in Zhejiang province and he said as he watched a, a tall woman and her mother. Yeah, it's a mother and line. daughter cut in line. A mother and daughter cut in line. He, all he said was, don't cut in line. Don't cut in line, yeah. Now, dude, you know how, how common this is? Oh, and it's, yeah. This is something that um, will infuriate you yes. in China, is that people cut the queue all the time. Yeah. Always cutting in line. And it's usually like the middle-aged, older women. Like the last generation. Yeah, the last generation, they do it all, a lot. So you'll be standing in line waiting for a ticket to buy a yeah. ticket at the train station. Yeah. And some IE, as we call them, will just come barge in front of you. Yeah. And nobody really confronts them. Yeah. They just let them get away with it. But this is what happens if you do confront them. This guy is this like, hey, poor guy. this poor guy's like, hey, don't cut the queue. And well, don't you, cut can, line. you can see what happened next. <laughs> Okay, let's. Yeah, before, before we get, get into yeah, to the fun stuff, uh, do you want to just give a quick uh, recap of what they were saying? Yes. So basically, what happened was this guy says, uh, presumably says, don't cut in line, right? Yeah. And the first, no, go back a little bit. Okay. The first thing that the daughter says, yeah, um, as I'll we see there. Bottom Gun yet again. Yeah, Bottom Gun, you just got to make a, you know, it's got to make, make a reappearance. reappearance. We're doing free advertising for, yeah, bottom, for bottom Gun, gun. over here. I'm t I, gotta, I can't wait for it to come out. I'm definitely <laughs> yeah. going to watch it. Okay. So the first thing that uh, it transpires is the daughter, the very tall daughter, gets super mad. And she says, you messed with the wrong person today. As she's speaking to yeah. the guy that said, don't cut in line. Mm -hmm. I don't even think she's very tall. She's just standing on a step. Oh, OK. <laughs> OK. It just makes her look because yeah. her mom is not standing on Yeah, because the they're walking up there. Yeah. 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 
and the the mother who is truly sinister looking. She is so bad looking. And she is getting lambasted across the Chinese internet for looking truly evil. Yeah, that, and <laughs> I, I'm noticing. reading the Chinese comments and they're saying things like the cultural revolution keeps on giving. Yeah, you yeah. know what I mean. Yeah, because she looks like a red guard. She's definitely one of those people who like ratted her parents out to the government. You know? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. One of those. Yeah. And she goes, "I will cut and lie." Yes. Right. Yeah. What's your oh, top way? So that means like I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna you tell me not to cut a line I'm gonna cut and yeah, line. Yeah, I will cut it. <laughs> Look at that face of her. <laughs> Holy crap! I mean, she. This is why she that right there. She became famous. <laughs> yeah, she became overnight fam in China because of being such an evil, horrible person. <laughs> yeah, she. Okay. Got, I mean, who says I will cut and line? Yeah, and then like we're not easy to mess with. Like don't mess yeah, with us, yeah, basically. Yeah. Um, and then her daughter. She's, she's yelling at the cop. By well, the way. yeah, the the security, the security guard or whatever. Guard, yeah. He comes. He obviously comes over because of the commotion. And yeah. you know what? The, the most annoying thing about this whole situation is, okay, they go off. They go yeah. completely crazy. The security calm guy comes yeah. in to try and calm them down and yeah. stuff. And the end result is they still cut in line. No one stopped them. No. They didn't. They didn't not cut no, in line. The poor guy got like screamed. Well, at the guy him. who said like, "Hey, don't cut in line." He didn't he even got, argue back. He didn't say a word. No, that's the whole joke. If you watch the full clip, he yeah. didn't say anything. These women are just unloading on him. Yeah. Uh, and then the security guard comes, and then they unload on him. And guess what? They still get to cut in line <laughs> because they're bullies. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's, wow. And then she turns into an unhinged they tomato. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> look at, look at the mom kind of in the look at, yeah, look at oh, the man. mom in the corner there. Wow. I mean, yeah. this woman mm -hmm. in Minecraft looks like she slurps babies down. Yeah, she's a horrible. She is so looking scary. Person. Like a yeah, the kind of person you don't want as a neighbor. Let's put it that way. Yeah, yeah. Holy um, mother of pearl. So this, you yeah. can imagine that the you know like cartoon representations are quite humorous. We'll show you yeah. the memes going around. Yeah, because again. It's Overnight weird. Celebrities. Yeah, it's it's weird. The the mother looks like this terrible red guard, like evil entitled person, and then the daughter comes out as an unhinged tomato. Yeah, she's like it's all red. <laughs> Super red. You know what she looks yeah. like? What? You know Super Mario World on SNES is a bit of a deep cut. Right. But you know the little apple looking guys that walk around? You know the little tomato looking? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. It kind of looks like <laughs> that. Doesn't it love she looks yeah, like? Yeah, she kind of does. Yeah. Anyway, she she gets super red because she's angry, screaming yeah. at the guy. <laughs> and that's I think that's the famous face. <laughs> well, I mean, <laughs> like an artist. Yeah. Yeah. So she says. Yeah. She says, you think I'm scared of you because you're a man? Yeah. You know, like, it's but, like you, you know, this kind of guy is Yeah, if you guy. watch the whole thing, she's also like, oh, you're just picking on us because we're women and you're a man, that kind of it's thing. It's a but whole long clip. It's basically, you've been caught out doing yeah. something bad, but now you're making a big thing trying to blame other people. It's yeah. ridiculous. Yeah. Anyway, so people yeah. started to... <laughs> Goomba. Yeah. Yeah, people the, started, the Goomba, like the Apple one. The Apple, yeah. So now, um, the people are starting to even mock them and like parody them. Oh, Pinkus Malawa! Yeah. Pinkus Malawa! <laughs> so people are making bumper stickers. Overnight. Uh, overnight. Yeah. Overnight. <laughs> With like meme music yeah, and everything. Wait, so it says like, don't don't cut in line, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, and it's, yeah, we're, it's, we're not easy to mess with. It's just become, it's become a phenomenon. They're literal celebrities now. Yeah, no, and it's like, I will cut in line. <laughs> yeah, we're not easy yeah. to mess with, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I love that this, it literally happened the next day. It was incredible how it spread. Yeah, because that video went viral and the next day people had this design and yeah. was printed. Um, not only were bumper stickers made of these uh, these horrible mother and daughter team, but like they made clothing merch. <laughs> For kids, <laughs> I mean, sometimes the lack of copyright laws are actually amazing. <laughs> in yeah, in China, China, yeah. So and it, the reason this spread is because it's not political. It's not inherently political. No, so this kind of stuff can spread. But it is also a, a commentary on society. It is, but it's like just out of that boundary of like being kind of sensitive. You know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, because look, nobody likes nobody likes this kind of yeah. behavior. No, right? Nobody enjoys to have people being obnoxious like that. No. So you know. Um, it's very interesting to see society hit back. Yeah, yeah, for sure. You know, it's. I think it's important too because 
some people might see something like this going on in China and say, oh, you know, all people in China are rude and they cut lines and stuff. And that's not true because when you see the pushback from the Chinese society, nobody likes this. There is just an unfortunate portion of Chinese society that does behave this way. Yeah. You know and what I mean? It's, it's a product of Mao's China. Yeah. And so it's good to see, you know, pushback against this. Yeah. People are, <laughs> this is not our edit. Somebody, yeah. uh, people have been making like basically like freeze frames of the faces so people can make stickers and stuff. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's like merch. I know. People are making <laughs> merch out of this. It's insane. And it just doesn't uh, go away. It's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah it, it is. Going. There's more stuff. Oh, there's more stuff I in there? So. I think that's just yeah. like a little cut. Okay. Well... Um, yes, is there, there is a Shaban home. Oh, okay. So before we get into our main topic today, guys, our soft power hour, because we've got a, a lot to talk about and some heavy stuff, but some yeah. funny stuff too. Uh, we just wanted to remind you all that we have a show on Monday. Uh, it's a secret show. It's a VIP show. And this is what you missed uh, this week. We're actually going to... <laughs> Wait a second. Okay, let me get us out of here. And we'll just explain to you what's going on. Oh, yes. <laughs> so, was that in this show? Yeah, it was. Uh oh I, I don't we, think we did a it. tier list, guys. We did a tier list of uh, the best Chinese food. Yeah, just food. reframe it there. I want to talk okay. about it a little bit. Yeah, okay, sure. You can talk. I'm just... Yeah. No, we, what we did was we did a tier list of the best Chinese food that we recommend, our favorite Chinese food. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we went through a bunch of different stuff. We also talked about some stuff that you should probably avoid. Okay. <laughs> All right, definitely. Probably, definitely, yeah. Probably, yeah. Uh, but it was actually just a lot of fun. and uh, Yeah, it was actually a really fun one. And so we went through and we classified it. Like, we did S through F tier, of course. Like, S is the best, F is the worst. But it's, F isn't isn't bad. We did good Chinese food in this episode. Yeah. And we're going to be doing worse stuff we ate in the following episode. Yeah, we're going to do, like, list. the worst Chinese food. Uh, we had a great response mm. to this, and we highly recommend you go check it out because we had a big debate on each food. And, it was, and we gave you a master list on the patron. Yeah. So you guys can go order um, those dishes in try them your out. Chinese restaurants to try it out. Yeah. Uh, so it was really fun. Uh, we did have a secret vote clip. As usual, it's a democratic show, and we show things that are too dicey for YouTube. And I'll this one was just out a, a little. Uh, yeah, yeah. It was so too we, much. we got a little. It was a little too much for me. It was no, like, no, it's, I can't. <laughs> <laughs> no. My Lord Almighty, does that make my stomach turn? That's pretty bad. I feel pretty sick after that, to be honest. Anyway. Yeah. <laughs> so, guys. Um, Please, if you have the means, head on over to uh, patreon.com forward slash ADV podcasts. Join the Shaban Ho tier and you can go and watch that episode and, of course, all the previous ones before that. Yeah, we're up to 44 episodes, our favorite numbers. Mm -hmm. um, we have one every single Monday. Yep. You don't have to watch it live like Winston said. You can watch all the previous ones. Yeah. You can binge them all. You can take your time. Yeah. But it's fun to be part of the community, and it's also the most efficient and best way to support us. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Anyway, let's move on. What have we got a Chinese flag flowing around here for? Well, I know. I know. Is that because <laughs> Xi Jinping's going to say some junk? Yay! Yay. What's he going to say? China has scored a complete victory against poverty. <laughs> With the joint <laughs> efforts made by the Communist Party of China and people from all ethnic groups in China, at this crucial move, moment to welcome and celebrate the 100th anniversary of the founding of the CPC. We have declared a complete victory in fighting against poverty. Isn't that very good timing? Isn't that just fantastic timing? It's almost it's like, like he said, by the 100th anniversary of the CCP, CPC, CPPCC. CCCPP, yeah. It's almost like when he said that, that there will be a complete victory over poverty, that it would be weird if he if they didn't have a complete yeah, victory over yeah. poverty. Of course so, they did, right? So if you're not in the know, Xi Jinping said that by the 100th anniversary, they would have eradicated poverty. Yeah. And then on the 100th anniversary, he made an announcement that they had eradicated poverty. <laughs> totally. Yeah, just completely done. Now, I wanted to... Spoiler alert. <laughs> They hadn't. So back in the day, <laughs> yeah. when he had made, he started making these kind of motions to say, we're going to get rid of poverty by so-and-so date. Yeah. Winston and I said, almost, I'm not going to say almost, very jokingly, yes. as a joke, that no, this will not happen. Because we understand from two people that lived in China over a decade, that traveled mm -hmm. around the entire country, that there is no way in gosh darn hell that poverty is going to be eradicated because yeah. not only is poverty a huge problem in China, it is about half of China when yeah. you're going around it. Yeah. It's very, very poor. Incredibly poor. Just to make a really quick comparison, in America, the average per, the average per person GDP 
per capita is eighty thousand dollars per year in China. It's like thirteen thousand, right? Yeah. That thirteen thousand yeah. is skewed by how many wealthy people are in city centers. Yeah. So you can imagine the people below that are not like making ten or eleven. It's people at the bottom. We were meeting people that were making one to two hundred RMB, so like thirty bucks a month. We yeah. met people that were making thirty dollars a month in China. Yeah. That's not the majority. No, but, but it exists. Scale that up a little bit, and you can understand how a lot of rural China works. And when I say rural, I'm not talking about like some Oklahoma shack out in the middle of nowhere. I'm talking yeah. about full on towns, right? Yeah. Towns with hundreds of thousands of people in some cases yeah. that are incredibly poor. Yeah, it's terrible. And you don't just eradicate that. It's a huge issue. It's not a developed country, no. right? It's not a country that can go around and say that, oh, we've finished all this stuff, right? Yeah. So to fast forward to this, at that time when he said that they were going to eradicate poverty by so-and-so date, I saw a lot of propaganda coming out about it, and we made a joke. We said, what's going to happen, as a joke, Yeah, is they're not going to eradicate poverty, but they will make it illegal to talk about poverty. Yes. They'll make it illegal to show poverty, mm -hmm. because that's how China works. Yeah. It, although we were joking, there's a lot of truth to that because we're like, you know what? What they'll probably do is just anytime someone posts about it, they'll remove the post and then and try that person with a crime. Yeah. And do you know what happened? Well, that's what they've been doing. Well, they actually literally just signed a law. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through that law. I wanted to cover a little bit about this uh, state media speech, though, because someone came up here that was very interesting. Okay, yeah, let's continue with the speech a little bit. So Xi Jinping goes on about his lie about, uh, you know, eradicating poverty here. And they show all this, like... Happy people doing stuff for the camera. Smiling people throwing money everywhere. You know why they're so happy over there with those hundred RMBs? It's the first time they've seen that, that much money in their life. They're like, what is this? Yes. Have I won the lottery? 300 RMB? I can tell RMB? you personal, by personal experience. <laughs> yeah. That's a... Anyway, it's all smiling rural people. China. And then this, so. Mm -hmm. Do you want me Woo! to play? Do you want me to play? Yeah, let's read says? his quote. Okay, uh, what does he say? has done uh, more to reduce extreme poverty in a short period of time than uh, any other country in history. Now with China's 1.4 billion people, pov extreme poverty has been eliminated. Uh, it's a tremendous achievement. Uh, it's a tremendous advance in well-being. And it's also a very powerful uh, framework and uh, source of hope for other poor countries in the world. Devin. Michael. So, mm -hmm. I find this, can you go back to that guy? Sure, you want to be- I find it? this absolutely infuriating. Right. Here you have Jeffrey Sachs, who is a economics professor at Columbia University, but also a huge influence. Like he's, he's named one of the most 500 most influential people in the world for geopolitics, right? Mm -hmm. What he says matters. Oh yeah, that's true. It does, I mean, yeah, it changes policy, right? It's true. Yeah, you know, you do know who he's connected to, though. That's what I'm getting. You're at. getting to that, okay? All right. So I'm, I'm digging around, looking okay. around, right? Yeah. This is a guy that has uh, said that the U.S.'s hegemony needs to be stopped and that China's rise should be celebrated. He's cozied up to dictators around the world, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. He has gone time and time again to hit every single talking point that people criticize the Chinese government about <laughs> with a counter to that. Right. He said that the use of genes the word genocide is is inappropriate to use for for what's happening to the Uyghurs. Mm -hmm. He's gone uh, gone through many many like if you could go to his freaking Wikipedia and then see what kind of things he said about the Chinese leadership, right? Yeah. It's it's pretty shocking. Yeah. He also set up a panel. Mm -hmm. to discount and completely try to over overturn the idea that COVID could have come from the Wuhan Institute of Virology right. from a lab leak. And do you know who he actually put on that panel? Hey, hey, what's that? It's almost like sacks are a theme. Yeah, it is. There's double sacks. It's double sacks. So basically he appointed Peter Bolsack. Yes. And, you know, Peter Part Desac. Ego death alliance. Yeah, exactly. Um, he also said that by speculating that it might come from a Chinese lab is going to lead the world to conflict. Yes. But then he's a big but proponent. Then... Yeah, he's like, <laughs> but it came from a lab in America, from yes. American research. into. Now so, it's now, according, mm. I mean, this is a global opinion leader who is yeah. now insinuating that the that coronavirus came from a U.S. funded laboratory, right? Yeah. And... There's two theories that he said now are are, are acceptable. One okay. is a natural spillover, yeah. and one is from a, a U.S.-led lab. Right? Yeah. 
Not that it came from China or anything. No, like and this. don't look into China because that'll create conf- conflict. But it's okay to point fingers at the USA. So we have an mm. economics professor of Columbia University, by the way. We, I have seen now. It's today I was going through on Chinese state media. It's got to be over a hundred times. Well, he's obviously the voice they want to hear. It's insane <laughs> the amount yeah. of sway he's he's pushing around the world, and I and there's mm. huge pushback against his against his books, against his articles and the things that he's done because he's he's towed the Chinese state line to the point where, I mean, he even had an article in uh, response to the Meng Wenzhou Huawei trial. Yeah. I mean, this has nothing to do with it, you know, like what he was usually talking about. And then he he took a stance on that too. And then eventually he actually deleted his Twitter because of the, the, the pushback. The pushback. Well, I mean, this, I, is, this is a Chinese... Uh, I just don't. I don't like it point. when you've got um, influential voices that are very obviously toadies mm-hmm. for the Chinese government. Yeah, it's it's just too obvious. Yeah, it's too obvious. Anyway, that's uh, mm-hmm. a kind of a little bit beside the point. We got to get into the main the meat mo- here. The main main meat of this is that you have an influential voice like that as the predominant voice on Chinese state media after Xi Jinping's speech saying eradicated poverty. Right. Mm-hmm. So what okay. happened was well. We actually covered. No, go back. Yeah, we'll yeah. we'll go back to that. We've got to we've got to say the point of this before we go into all. No, this no, thing. we have to show this. It's you want to okay? You want to show the? So we highlighted something uh, a while back that you guys. I think it's good to hark back to this. Oh yeah, absolutely. We hark back. We're gonna need to hark back to this. There was a guy that was going around and finding poor people, mm-hmm. not on purpose. You would just look out, look at someone. How much do you spend on groceries? And then he would reimburse them for their groceries. Yeah, like China's Mr. Beast. We it's, called it. Yeah, it's like kind of China's Mr. Beast. Right? If China, if Mr. Beast only like gave, gave people like ten dollars, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna give you ten iPhone stickers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Anyway, yeah. Yeah, let's see. Good I might not. You like Chengdu is here. Oh, Gendar. Gendar is here. Gendar Mo 今天要买点什么？我就是买点米，我也没吃过的。咱们今天给播话，买点米也要买点肉。Yeah. Uh, so do you remember what happened to him? He all the shit got removed, right? Yeah. Why? Because it showed China that China has poor people. Yeah. And that became the one of the first examples of us looking at something and saying, "Holy shit!" They actually took action. Mm. But that was prior to this law. Yeah. And uh, for those of you who may, might be confused, maybe you didn't see that whole thing before. This guy who was going out there and he he offered to buy her. He was just doing social experiment crap, yeah, you know, it's that, it's that type of thing. And he Mr. was like, East. Oh, yeah, Mr. East, yeah, Mr. East. He's like, oh, I'll, like how much? Normally he would be like, how yeah. much do you own a month? Yeah, I'll use your entire monthly salary. Let's yeah. go buy your food. Sure. But it turns out she only earned fifteen dollars a month. Yeah. You know, the equivalent of fifteen US dollars a month was her pension. You know, and because that went viral, the Chinese government lost a lot of face because it flies in the face of this idea that poverty is eradicated, or that they have any social programs yeah. that help people. Exactly. So, how is it that pov- extreme poverty is eradicated when an old elderly widow can only get fifteen US dollars a month from the government? Fifteen US dollars a month is extreme poverty. Yes, absolutely. So, because this was just going around the internet, he got wiped out and all of his social media got wiped out. He's done. And now we have this new law. Okay. So March. Yes. In okay. March, the Cyberspace Administration of China, the country's internet regulator, announced that it would crack down on anyone who pub- And get this. Yeah. Guys, understand. This is a law. A law. That punish- it punishes people who publish videos or posts that deliberately manipulate sadness, incite polarization, create harmful information that damages the image of the party and the government. Mm-hmm. And disrupts economic and social development. It bans sad videos of old people, disabled people, and children. Yeah. This is what they care about, guys. Uh, The People's Republic of China cares about the party and the government looking bad. Yeah. That literally says that in the law. 
That is what they care about. They mm-hmm. don't care about helping people. They just want to hide it. They want to put stones on rebar. Yep. And they want to hide. Pretend that's cotton or something. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so this makes it very clear. So if you read this law that they're now putting, they've now put into place, think about it. If you were to film an elderly beggar, okay, and post it online and say, oh, this poor beggar, I gave him a bowl of food or something or, you know, something yeah. like that. Or, or just having them in the background. Yeah. The video would be deleted, yes. and you'd possibly get into legal trouble. It's, a, it's illegal now. It's yeah. not just a, a content removal. It's yeah. illegal. It's banned. So yes. you can't put, like, sad sad videos of old people, disabled people, and children. Yeah. I suppose you could put happy videos of old people, disabled people, and children, but not sad ones. Yeah, I don't even know about that. Because if it shows or impairs... This is another clause of the law. It's important. If it impairs social or economic development to say like, oh, the, the poor person, the poor disabled person is happy, it still shows a poor disabled person, which could impair the the image that China is economically developing. And here's the, the thing. China loves these sweeping open-ended laws because yes. it says, yes. oh, uh, any harm, create harmful information that damages the image of the party. Now, what could that even mean? Yeah. It's, it's like, oh, you damaged the image of yeah. the party. Yeah. Oh, you filmed a graffiti on the wall or, right. you know, you filmed a, a crack in the pavement. That damages the image of the party. Yeah. They can literally use it for anything. And yeah. it's so frustrating because yeah. it gives them an open license to just arrest you willy-nilly. <laughs> Life I mean? has become happier, comrades. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. So, uh, actually, those excerpts there, I want you guys to open up the article later, but it's from New York Times. It's a really good um, mm-hmm. uh, conglomeration of a lot of these events yeah. that came after this law or right before it. Mm-hmm. Um, and it goes on to talk about the... Um, the person that was removed, the guy that we just yeah, saw, Yeah, Hu right? Chen Feng, recorded so, the footage that was removed from the Chinese internet. On popular video sites, he had posted a recording showing an elderly woman living on barely $15 a month. In the words of many social media commenta- commentators, he was revealing too much. The subject is untouchable. One commenter wrote on uh, the now-deleted discussion thread on Jehu, a site similar to Quora. Um, his account was censored simply because he showed... What life is like for many people. I thought that was a powerful quote, so I put yeah. it there. Yeah. He simply showed what life is like for many people, and that's why he got in trouble. We're at a point now where you can't even show regular normal life, even if it's not political. Yeah. The censorship has become so extreme in China, you can't show normal people's life. And guess what? Normal people's life for a lot of people in China is poor. It is. It's not a minority. No. In fact, I'd say it's the majority of, yes. the, majority of the people of China live in some something that you, um, as a Western person, someone who is living in a developed country, someone who's, you know, perhaps, you know, who has an internet connection, like, you know, you're watching this on a yes. phone or something, yeah. um, you would consider poor. Yes. You know, yes. when you've been into the countryside of China, you'll see, this is not to say that China doesn't have rich people. No. Of course they do. China no. has a, a big middle class. It's, but it's largely but, a poor yes. country. I, I'm just trying yeah. to say... I'm. People seem to, and this is the problem with the Chinese government and all the apologists, is they seem to think that if you say there are poor people in China, that you're somehow trying to say everyone in China is poor. And that's not true. You do get very rich people in China. You do get middle class people in China. You do get big cities. You do get infrastructure. But that doesn't mean that everybody's rich. No. It doesn't mean that everything's great. But you see that it's the most important thing for the party for the, everyone to believe yeah. it's the richest country in the world now. Yeah. It's it's the Xi Jinping's China is has no, not one ounce of reality anymore. The majority of people in China are what I would consider lower than middle class. Yes, uh, you know, on a financial scale. Yeah, absolutely. You know what I mean? And yeah. like, especially the people we would meet all the time. Yes. Even even people living in the cities and yeah. doing the grind and office work and everything were earning a pittance. Yeah. Like a thousand US dollars a month or a thousand five hundred US dollars a month. Yeah, that was considered pretty well off. And that's considered very well off. That's considered a, a blue collar job. Yeah. You know? A white collar job. White sorry. collar, yeah. yeah. Gonna, I was about to say, what are you talking about? No, that's sorry, about? a white collar. <laughs> sorry. I just, you know, sometimes people wear those blue shirts with the white collars. That really annoys me. Blue shirts with the white it's, collars. There's, it's a thing. It's huh. a thing. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, that looks terrible. Yeah. Um, anyway, the thing is, uh, I like got me, the blue oh, and white. Uh, yeah, exactly. Anyway, the fact of the matter is, um, they're trying to hide poverty. And now they're putting laws in place to hide poverty. Yeah, so we thought, um, mm-hmm. you know, there's another article about it. Yeah, it's it's just the, the art, different articles making the rounds. We thought we'd play some of the background while we uh, discuss this. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, oh, you've got to yeah, talk this about this important. first. So if you... <laughs> By the way... <laughs> So if you search Pinquin, uh, Pinquin means Pinquin means poverty, right? Yes. If you search Pinquin on the Chinese internet, Baidu, so the equivalent yeah. of Google, yeah, 
the results you would think would be like, here, help charity, this. Yeah. Poverty is a big problem in Guizhou and Gansu province, right? You think it'd be articles, right? Yeah. It points to an English article from the University of Riverside, uh, California. And it Makes says, sense. poverty is the fourth greatest cause of U.S. deaths. And it's like a, an American article about uh, poverty so in America. When you, so when you search in Chinese, yeah, poverty, yeah. on the Chinese search engine, big search engine, it comes up with an American article about how poverty yes. in America is the fourth largest killer of, of people. Or yes, and it also comes up with a Chinese article about the exact same thing. Yeah, now it wasn't only that guy's stuff that was deleted. There was also a music video that was doing the rounds, remember? Yeah, well, you, it was a bunch of stuff. You included the music I did, video, yeah, right? But first, I put in some. Uh, oh yeah, some poverty footage. Look, I we thought real. we thought that it's our um, duty to break the Chinese law. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Since we're not in we China, did, yeah. because Chinese people can't break the Chinese law, and show uh, some real videos of China, and that poverty does exist in China. And, this... and these are Chinese people that film this stuff because mm -hmm. they go around and they see it. Yeah. And they see it and they want to put it out there because they want something to change. Yes. Because guess what? There are, and I say this facetiously, but I also say this with some truth. There are no social programs in China. When you are in a major city and a woman is getting $15 a month for a pension and no uh, medical insurance, that is not a social program. No. The government can afford so much more than that. Yeah. There are no social safety nets. We covered those farmers. Yeah. Those farmers were earning about what? It was like... On a good on a good year, ten thousand RMB per year, yeah, right? When they're doing exactly. their farming, they didn't get any pension or insurance. Yes, yes. These are not out of the middle of nowhere. Like can't find these people. They're you know they're off the grid or whatever. These are normal people that don't get reimbursed. Yeah, and these poor people that we're showing in the videos behind us here, uh, it's what you come across in the cities everywhere. And this, what you're seeing behind you, is something I filmed myself personally. Okay. Um, if you want to see that, you want to say poverty doesn't exist or everyone's been... This is been... downtown Guangzhou. This a is... first tier yeah, city. Guangzhou, in the city center. If people don't know, Guangzhou used to be called Canton. Gu Guangzhou is, you know, one of the biggest, one of the big four cities in China. And uh, this is right downtown. This is after going to the temple there. Um, I went with my wife. City and... center, right? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. A very famous temple. And you can see the police barriers are set up over there. Um because they expect crowds at this time of year because of yeah. these things. But I want you to take a look at the, uh, the, the people that have been lifted out of poverty all lining the fences over here. So many, so many people have been I filmed lifted. This, I filmed this myself. Right. And this is something that I, uh, the previous time that I went there, it was the same. And I was so It's like so this outside angry. the temple I lived in in yeah. China. I was so angry. I tried to film, but I got confronted by a beggar gang. And they tried to force me to not film. And because I was so like... Angry, I pressed record, but I thought I was pressing record, but I turned it off, so I missed filming the whole interaction. Yeah, but anyway, the fact is you can see all the beggars and you can see the, the, the poverty over here. This is what's been eradicated. There's children apparently. involved. This is not like just old people, but No, the way. of course. Um, it's important to know that this exists because if you were to just watch Chinese propaganda or if you were to just go on the internet, right. you wouldn't be able to find this. Yeah, You know why you can't find it? Because they delete it and now they've made a law against not being able to show this. I would probably be arrested if I tried to oh, uh, yeah. post this now, if yeah, I was living sure. in China. Absolutely. Would, at the very least, it would be censored and deleted and I'd get a talking to. Right. You know what I mean? And a Chinese person living in China, if they were to film these beggars over here in Guangzhou, one of the first tier cities, which by the way, there are cops everywhere around here. That should be, okay? and, and there's alone children yes. going around begging and the cops are doing nothing. Yeah, they're, they're disfigured children. There's, there's gangs, burned yeah. children with their arms cut off. There's lots of like awful things going on with all this beggar stuff over here. Cops don't do anything. No one cares. It's just the way it is, right? Um, and this is a reality of China, okay? See there, the mother says, go, go beg over there. Sends a kid to go run, run after uh, somebody over there to try and get money. This is the reality of China. This is not fake. This is not some this weird thing. This is one of the richest cities and richest areas yeah. of the richest city. Exactly. Hey, guys. Now, this is some other footage of this. This is a wedding yeah. where people, we've covered this. Yeah. This, wed this, is, this was not an expose. Some people were just filming their wedding because they were happy. And everyone was celebrating, right? 
Mm -hmm. And these people got their videos removed and got arrested for showing that they were poor. I know. The video wasn't even about them being poor. No. They were just showing their wedding. Yeah, showing their rural wedding. I filmed these uh, beggars on the... This was actually in Beijing. Keep breaking um, the law, guys. Keep breaking the laws. That's, yeah. You broke two laws there. That's old people. Sad old people. They got really pissed off with me because I was like, what are you doing on the... You know, begging on the subway? And they were like, well, get out of here then, you know. <laughs> they didn't like being filmed. I filmed this as well. Uh, look, there are beggars everywhere in China. There's poverty everywhere in China. It has not been eradicated. It's a, it's a lie. It's a lie. And this is proof. Okay? It's proof because I filmed a lot of those. And some of the other clips you saw are even more recent. It exists, but you can't show it. Okay? Well, look at the nice infrastructure we were Yeah. In. We love this infrastructure. It's great. Um... <laughs> But uh, we just had to put this out there because now the images you're seeing, previously they could leak out. You know, people could show how people live, but now you can't even show this anymore. No, and so, it's illegal. It's against the law. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, here, by the way, Chongqing behind us over here. You know, Chongqing. Outside of a Gucci shop. Yeah, it's a Gucci shop. Some good juxtaposition. Yeah, there. I know. And in front, this, by the way, was taken last week. Okay, yeah. This is new. This is not something old. Uh, you've got a lady there getting the trash oil. You know mm -hmm. the trash oil she's wearing? Again, we've shown something similar to this in the past, remember. Yeah. She's wearing her restaurant's apron. Mm. And there she is digging the oil, the chili oil and stuff, out of the trash can so that it could be reused in the restaurant. Isn't that a... A good juxtaposition, though. With it is. So you go buy your Gucci bag in Chongqing, by the way. Um, you know, big mega city. Yep. I'm sure Biggest you, city in the world. You guys have probably all seen that footage of the... A lot the, of propaganda about Chongqing. Yeah, wow, these days uh, of that lit up place near the river and stuff. It's from here. Uh, so you go buy your Gucci bag, and then afterwards you can go have a delicious meal at a restaurant next door, uh, which is cooked using trash can oil. Yep. For lack of a better word. It's gutter oil, but it's coming out of a trash can this time. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Anyway. Again, if you show that, you'll go to jail in China. Mm -hmm. uh, you can skip all this. There's some gratuitous us in the countryside yeah, of China footage. Yeah, that's us riding through the countryside. Um, we don't need to sit on this all day. No, let's we just, don't. Let's continue. Okay, anyway. It's just... It's, 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 yeah. Oh, just sad. It's oh, yeah. This is my favorite old grandpa over here cut, uh, cleaning his vegetables. Some sanitary water. It's, I mean, I feel bad for these people, but it exists, guys. Like, yeah. it's not a, it's not a mystery here. It's not hidden. Yeah. You just go around. It China is hidden. And I'm saying it's about to be. <laughs> it, I mean, it just is hidden now. You're not able to show um, any anything that puts the party in a bad light. You're not allowed to show sad poverty. You're not allowed to show anything that's uh, not shining buildings in the latest BYD car or something. Yeah. You know, or a Huawei phone. Yeah. Or a spaceship taken off. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's that's what China's become. Anyway, uh, this is another thing. This music video went absolutely viral too, and the just song. yeah, it's actually but it looks like it's like an old thing. This is just using old footage. Yeah, he just used some footage from a movie. It's a new song. Um, and basically, the gist of the song is he's a well-educated guy, um, mm -hmm. and uh, he's complaining that he has to do work as a delivery driver and yeah. stuff now because his education is not getting him anything it's a, it's a criticism of the chinese yeah. government but without being super critical of the chinese government just criticizing the standard of life yeah it's just like you know there's no hope for you know for us we have to it's struggle a com now. it's a commentary on the unemployment rate of the youth in china which china's mm -hmm. done nothing about anyway just a little, uh, a little snippet, snippet there so we don't get copyright. yeah uh and this got banned all over china yep you can still find this particular video on youtube and if you go to the youtube description it even says this has been banned all over china now yep. Yep. in the wall they say yeah and uh because it was a catchy tune and it was social commentary on the fact that it's hard for graduates to find jobs these days which is very very real it's real but of course china doesn't want anyone to see it oh, you can find and, that song in the new york times article yeah you can which i linked and if you uh basically sweep everything under the carpet then say nothing to see here nothing's wrong then there is no poverty right nope this it's, is where we're at we're, we're approaching north korea level yeah it's absolutely terrible and disgusting, and it's something that um, everybody has to see through it. Every time you see anything coming out of China where they talk about their green tech or they talk about, uh, you know, 
progress in, in technology and high-speed rails and all that, you have to understand that it all follows a similar model. you got to understand China. Yeah, you absolutely. Just, you got to understand China. It follows this, this whole idea of only show the good and don't let anyone know that anything bad exists. And America is bad. Yes. Pretty much. Yes. That's how it goes. The it West is. is bad. China only does good. Yes. Yeah, it's kind of a stupid situation. Shall we move on to a boy slap, the main event, boy slapping Chairman Mao statue? Yeah, I think we should. Okay. So this, did you include the entire music video? In oh, here? just his background. Okay. Yeah. Because he likes to repeat this nonsense uh, old clip. Okay, anyway. So let's... Uh, Moving on. Move on. Moving on, guys. Moving on. And we're moving on. Yes, we are. Here we go. We're moving on. Okay, so... Uh, props to the great translation movement. I mean, we'd seen this video before, but they've gone and translated it. Saved us a little bit of time yeah. here. <laughs> oh my gosh, we yeah. spent so much time. We I usually spent four trans- hours translating yesterday. Yeah, we so usually translate our own stuff. Yeah, yeah. but uh, they're great. Follow them on Twitter. Yes, at oh, tgtm underscore official, uh, and they're really helping break down walls. You know, break down barriers, so to speak, yeah. by translating what's out there publicly on the Chinese internet. So. Um, on April 23rd in uh, Juma, Juma Dien, Henan, an elementary school student slapped a bronze statue of Chairman Mao and then was caught by the police. So let's take a look. Maybe get so elementary out. school, meaning, you know, for the British people out there, primary school. So yeah, primary school. Kindergarten through fifth grade. Yeah. So here he is, okay. Um, there's a statue of Chairman Mao. <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, wait. I mean, yeah. it's funny and so effed up yeah. at the same time. But let's let's go back because uh, I like how he starts like, "Yo, isn't <laughs> yeah. that Mao Zedong?" Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. He's like, "Yeah." Yo, so yeah he got uh, because he's a minor he wasn't actually put into custody but he was reprimanded um because it and constitutes they yeah that constitutes defamation of a national leader also he will have a pock mark a black oh, mark of course for the whole, rest of his life his whole family is going to be very badly affected by this unfortunately um, so obviously they went to go and arrest him. You can see he's actually in handcuffs there. You can see yeah, behind him. But a, a child. This yeah. is a, a elementary school child yeah. into handcuffs. Well, if they're good enough to, you know, work in the factories, they're good enough to be handcuffed. You know what I mean? This is very true. This, yeah. is the, this is the way of the Chinese government. Yeah. So anyway, here's the thing. Uh, you can see the Mao Zedong statue on the floor there next to him as proof. Yeah. You know, and they captured him. I love that they put the, they like, they respect this so much, but they still laid it down on the ground. It's one of those things. You notice, like, when they catch dog thieves, they tie the dog, the yeah. carcass around their neck. It's to yeah. basically broadcast the crime. Yeah. It's like prostitutes. They put the placard and say, I'm a whore. Yeah, exactly. Around. So yeah. it's like, and prayed this, the streets. this is what he did. Yeah. He slapped this mouse statue. So, so they, they got to put it, they got to put the mouse statue there. <laughs> they don't give a shit about They that probably mouse slapped statue. it too, just to like, this is what he <laughs> did, like, you know? This is. This is Watch me. And then they're like, what did you just do, sir? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> da, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah. Someone anyway. please make some fan art about people slapping, slapping statues. Slapping the statue, seriously. Arrested. I mean, guys, um, this is very hard for a lot of people to comprehend because when you look at uh, the West, you see people, they like draw these like really insulting pictures of, Whatever. of Biden or Trump yeah, yeah. or something, you know, and they'll like all those, all this kind of stuff. I mean, they made that big Trump balloon to fly yeah. around in yeah. the UK or whatever, and all these yeah. kind of things. And that's just how the West works. You can insult a leader if you yeah, don't like a leader. Fine. In China, you slap it's a freaking... It's not just them, by the way. It's yeah. any any country, any democratic country. It's, it's, yeah. it's commonplace. Sure. But I mean, seriously, slapping a bronze statue of a long dead leader, yeah. a piece of shit. A shit, one of the shittiest yeah. piece of shit people that ever roamed the earth. He didn't hurt Waste the statue, of a man. by the way. He didn't hurt the statue. <laughs> it's bronze. He's a little child. I wish he did. I he wish was, he hurt Mao Zedong yeah, in real life. He was like slapping it on his bed or something. I so hope it's Mao a soft, felt that. <laughs> it's a soft, like, yeah. you know, like a little soft boy hitting this thing and it's landing. And that is just enough to get the cops to come and arrest you and give you a lecture and all that it's ridiculous this guy's a this boy's a chad yeah 
I love his like yo, yo, yo to do, man. To do, man. Yeah, yeah, it's like what? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude. Love anyway, it. it is funny, but it's also tragic because it shows you how backwards China's gone. Disrespect the leader. Do it more. Yeah, please. And you know what is crazy? Can you even imagine if this was him doing this to Xi Jinping? Oh my word! Because this was light. Yeah, Mao Zedong is still worshipped, obviously, right? Massively, but, but nowhere near where we're at with Xi Jinping. Yeah, Xi Jinping's the new, the new. Imagine Mao. if you slap in a figurine of Xi or yeah. a, a poster or something. That'd be terrible. Remember the ink girl? Yeah, right, ink girl, the girl in uh, China that threw black ink on the picture of of Xi Jinping. She's disappeared. Yeah, absolutely. They'll, they'll kill you over that. Stuff. Look at what happened, um, you know, in the UK with the consulate because somebody had a yeah. poster of a Xi Jinping like in a bad light, and they ripped it down and pulled the people in, try to beat them up Tried in beat them England. Up in England. Yeah, in, in the UK. Like, by the way, the, the most important part of this story: those are the diplomats. Yes, the, not just some random nationalists. Yeah, like the actual like <laughs> yeah. big diplomats were doing it's it. It's so important mm. that they control the narrative and. Yeah. Really, what this is about, and what mm -hmm. we want to bring up, is people are going to talk about this. Oh, he slept a Mao Zedong statue. Is about Mao. This isn't actually about Mao. This is actually about Xi Jinping. Yes. Because when you disrespect one of the past leaders like this in this respect, mm -hmm. it shows that you don't have respect, probably for the current leader too, and it makes that behavior okay. So they yeah. have to publicly punish this kind of stuff. Yeah, it's absolutely ridiculous. It's a, it's a kid. Yeah, it's a child. Bro, it's a little kid. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if you got... I mean, we do all kinds of dumb shit. I used to blow up Barbies with firecrackers yeah. with my friends, you know? Yeah, exactly. I wish it was a Mao Zedong statue Me now. Me too. I kind of want to find a Mao Zedong statue. Let's do let's, it. Let's, yeah, let's desecrate it live on, uh, let's do it in the on the show. We'll just do it live on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Let's we'll, like, slap draw mustaches it. on it and Let's stuff. slap it and blow it up. Yeah. 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 It sounds like fun. Anyway. Um, <laughs> poor guy. Poor, poor guy. Are we ready to move on to uh, Wumao Corner? Probably call him a kid. What? They call him a kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, let's go to Wumao Corner. Okay, Wumao Corner is where we talk about the haters. And we got something kind of interesting today. Um, and I, I really, really want to shed some light on this. Okay, and I want to show you how this works. Yeah, it's kind of related. It is related, definitely related. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in the background. Um, the House China Committee targets top clothing brands in forced labor probe, something along those lines. Okay, so basically, you know, there is this this thing about child labor and forced labor in China. Yeah. Okay? Now, it's a big worry. You hear about it, sweatshops. You see uh, something went viral recently from that Shine thing where people yeah. were getting, they were getting notes like help me or mm -hmm. whatever, yeah. you know, in the products they it's were. It's been going yeah, on Yeah, this years. is something that people know about. It's always a thing. Forced labor is ubiquitous around China. Yeah, okay. And child labor, we mm -hmm. know it exists or it has existed. It's not a secret, okay? Of course, China has anti-child labor laws, Yeah. okay? You have to be 16 to work. If you're uh, younger than 16, you're not allowed to be working. It's interesting because I saw... Freaking five to eight year olds soldering wires into calculators when I went to yeah. China in a major city. And that's the thing, though. You know, <sighs> what we've seen with our own eyes shows us. That's why we have this show. Yeah. We would not have this show Remember otherwise. Remember all the children working in the village where we had our shop? Yeah. What? Dude. Like, there was underage kids working in factories. I mean, in uh, illegal yeah, factories. Guys, there's a reason why we have a lot of passion for what we do. Yeah. And that's because when you see bullshit, yeah. Okay. You have to stand up to it. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, and when you've seen the reality of China, and then you have all these glowing reports and all these useful idiots going around mm -hmm. um, defending China and saying things that are completely untrue. Yeah. Because you've seen it with your own eyes, you have to stand up to it. There's just nothing else you can do. If yeah. you don't stand up to it, you're a coward. Yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, because there's now a new probe into child labor, this guy, his name's Morton or something. Wait, just a quick question. Why do you think they would probe into child labor in China? Would it be because it's a huge pervasive issue? It is. And <laughs> we'll get into that. This guy, uh, yesterday, this was being shared around a lot. It's been getting a lot of retweets, a lot of likes. Every single shill and person who's a useful idiot for the Chinese government has been retweeting. This guy has been interacting with this. All the usual suspects, you know who they are. Um, and let me just read a little bit of his tweet here. Uh, this Morton guy says, this is another fabricated lie by the US to smear China. By the way, if you hear the word smear China, you know that this is a this is somebody working for the Chinese government. Or, or at least a wumao. brandishing their, you yes. know, exacerbating the talking points. He says, I have 27 <clears throat> years working experience in China. I have inspected and worked with hundreds of factories in many provinces and seen hundreds more. I have never once 
seen neither forced labor or child labor in China. Bro needs to go to an eye doctor. Then he's like, I have, though, seen child labor in factories in lesser developed Asian countries, which are not under U.S. and EU scrutiny, countries with lesser developed educational systems than China, where you go seven years to school, blah, blah, blah. So basically his whole thing is... It doesn't exist. And that the U.S. And that the is, US is making this up. And he's, please retweet to get the word out and stop the U.S. in continuing fabricating lies. Enough! So okay. this is an outrage campaign. Yes. And we wouldn't cover, we don't cover someone's regarded personal tweets, right? No, but this is not, this is being retweeted yes. by Chinese state yes. media, yes. by Chinese pundits. Every single all, one of them. All these really ridiculous shills. Yeah. So... Um, I gave a little reply to the guy. It's important here, guys. I said, uh, you need to get out more. I've seen children working in rural areas, melting plas- melting down plastics, etc., yep. in makeshift factories. I remember in 2008 when I was living in Shenzhen, the Chinese government uh, broke up a huge child labor ring. <laughs> you don't believe the CCP? I mean, and- we saw child labor up up. Up in 2017, 2018. Yeah, absolutely. And here's here's my whole point to this, guys. Here's a point. This guy is saying in 27 years, he's never seen any child labor. It's all fabricated lies by the U.S. But the Chinese government themselves were reporting on breaking up child labor rings, where basically what would happen is you'd have these middlemen who would go and either kidnap or outright buy children from parents in the rural countryside or trick them into coming to work yep. in the big cities. Yep. And what they would do is they would actually go uh, organize, go as middlemen to these factories and say, I can provide you with uh, you know, cheap child labor. And uh, they, they would just bring these kids mm. into work. I've got some evidence of that, by the way. But you see how pervasive this kind of thing is. Here you've got another guy who says, 80% of Americans believe China is bad because they hear fake stories from China watchers who know nothing about uh, real China. Pick me, pick yeah. me. I lived in China for 10 years. I saw <laughs> child labor a lot throughout the entire stay. Yeah. Uh, he says, somehow those remote viewers and psychics seem to know more about China than normal humans who live and work in China like Morton. This stinks okay. of a sire. It is. It is. So basically what they're saying is there's no child labor. Trust somebody who lives there. It's preposterous. Okay. It's, yeah, where is that? I got it somewhere here. Yeah. It's preposterous. Here's the thing. Okay. Never mind the fact that we lived there and we saw the child labor with our own eyes. Um, the Chinese government reported yes. on child labor <laughs> Many times. multiple times. And then, of course, the guy blocked me after I tweeted at him, by the way. Uh, but here is the, uh, uh, what is this? The superior people's, what, what does that even say? Prosecurate of the people, whatever the hell it is. That's too small for me to read from you. Typical commie sounding language over there. <laughs> um, this is their own thing talking about child labor and why it needs to be combated. Okay? And this is acknowledging that it's a big issue. Absolutely. This is the Chinese government. Um, I shared another one here from a six tone, which is Chinese state media, yeah. about undercover child labor video leads to arrests. This is in 2016, by the way. Mm. Um, this particular thing, but there was a, a huge thing. The Chinese government was very proud to this. This was from the 2016 thing here, this picture in the background. Very proud to say, look, we've arrested these um, child um, labor gangs. Or we've arrested these people that have been using child labor. So the Chinese government themselves right then and there reporting that child labor is a thing. See over here, this was uh, in 2008. It was in Dongguan. That was when they busted that big ring that I remember because when I was living there, of course, this was when the Chinese uh, news was much more open. Yeah. It wasn't open, but it was much more open. Much more open. They're very happy to report on this stuff because it makes them look good. Yeah. Makes them look good that they're cracking down on child labor, right? So here, a girl cried after being rescued on Monday from a factory where she had been forced to work in Dongguan, China. And Dongguan was about an hour's drive away from where I used to live. And I remember this very clearly being a very big issue uh, where hundreds of children were rescued because of the stupid gang that was selling them to the factories. And, you know, um, the the way they get away with this is big factories like Apple or whatever, Samsung and all that, even though they've been caught, Samsung was caught out with child labor because of an audit they found out in China that ch- children were being used. But it's not their fault because what happens is They have a factory there, okay? They send their auditors in and they make sure that nobody is hiring underage people. But it's the subcontractors, 
right? Because that factory then will be like, hey, we need this little thing soldered together. We don't have time to do it. I'm going to subcontract that work. Mm. And then there's no oversight on the subcontractors. And it's these little subcontractors in the middle of nowhere where they use um, child labor. And it's not seen. So, yeah, this guy, this Morton, the steakhouse or whatever this guy's name is, he goes to uh, big factories, obviously, whatever he does. And he's not going to see that because he's not going to the rural factories. He's being taken around. He's spending his time in a KTV all the time. Being wined and dined by factory people or whatever. Typical. We met a lot of people. Yeah, like living that. in his expat bubble. Of course, he's not going to see child labor. Nope. Um, but for him to deny that it exists when the Chinese government itself admits to it and puts their own, you know, publications out about it, is just disingenuous. And it shows you how these lies perpetuate. It's bullshit and it's immoral. Yeah. Take back what you said, because that's you're you are part of the problem. You're now, part of the gov- Chinese government sign up to make sure that nobody sees the problem so that they're never mm-hmm. combated. By the way, here are toy guns that were being made for Walmart. I okay. play the toy gun now. <laughs> the play I'm the- so bored. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Please don't play that. <laughs> I don't want to see that. You'll have to go to Shelf. I know it didn't Yeah, I'm exactly. Um, You'll cry. Yeah, it's awful. Uh, now, the thing is, of course, it's it's easy enough for people like that Morton the Steakhouse guy to go and say, hey, listen, um, these... It's being wined and dying. Yeah, exactly. We, when we lived out west, we mm-hmm. went to VidCon for yes. YouTube, and we were wined and dined by a lovely company at Morton the Steakhouse. Yes, the which, best steak Which ever. we've always remembered as the best yeah. steak ever, but with a ridiculous name. Mm-hmm. Anyway. Just reminded me of that because his name's like Morton or whatever. It was right outside the YouTube conference. Yeah. It was amazing. Now, look look here. This, this footage, yeah, it's grainy, <laughs> but there are children working here. You could tell that's... That's not a grown man that's no. working over there making these things. This kind of grainy footage of child labor around China, it emerges all the time. Yeah. Okay. And these guys, they can dismiss this as, oh, it's just a once off de- deregulated this and that and the no, next I thing. I saw it. Yeah. But it's real. Yeah. It's not fake. It's not made up. You can dismiss this, but how dare you dismiss the official Chinese government? Yeah, you're how going dare you? Their narrative. How dare you not believe what your masters tell you? <laughs> exactly. You know that's where I really draw the line. Yeah, yeah. You know they are so willing to be apologists for China that they even disobey their masters. Yeah, this is where you're going to get bit. Yeah, you're going to get bit by you your masters. Do not disobey your masters. Your what? masters have been very proud at cracking down on child labor, which does exist. They're about to crack down on your labor because yeah. you went against their narrative. I know. And if they are releasing articles about them cracking down on child labor all the way up till, you know, very recently, and of course they're not going to anymore because that's not uh, good optics for China. Mm. Um, and you've been there 27 years and you didn't know this existed? Well, then you're not listening to what your masters are saying. Yeah. You know? Yep. Isn't that just disgusting? Yes. Disgusting that these people are try try to divert away from this problem. They would rather children suffer and be forced into child labor than criticize the Chinese government or even allow the Chinese government to even look bad for a little minute. True. You know what I mean? True. And they could be much better about it. They could be like, yes, child labor does exist in China, but hey, it's being taken seriously. Yeah. And the Chinese government's cracking down on it. Here's some articles. Yeah. But no, it's like, this doesn't exist. It's a lie by America to smear China. It's a lie. <clears throat> yeah, guess what? It's not a lie, you dumbass. And your Gong Chan Dan has proven that it's not a lie. And it's yeah. not a smear by America. It's a smear by these people that employ children. Yeah. You how, ba- how about you stop simping for the country and the government that says it's okay to employ children? <laughs> yeah. Well, or at least a- trying to hide it now. Yeah, they're hiding yeah. it now. I mean, they were, they were combating it, and it yeah. is a problem. And remember, in 2015, I'd like to say, correct me if I'm wrong, Internet, but I think it was 2015, there was that huge thing where they were um, employing as slaves, basically. They had slavery with the brick kilns. Yeah. Remember? Yeah. It was they rescued the Chinese government again, your masters, rescued not only children, but disabled people. Yeah, they were hiring disabled people. Not hiring, I mean, forcing them, enslaving them. They weren't getting paid. Nope. And there were like disasters at some brick kilns where people were dying, and then they found why are there all these disabled people and, and children working here? Mm. And so they cracked down on it. It was yeah. countrywide crackdown on yeah. brick kilns. All right. Still happens though. And then it led to further arrests due to child labor and things like that. So the thing is, what I'm trying to say is acknowledge that it exists. Yeah. And that's the only way we can attack it and the only way it can be stopped. Because sure. as soon as you start denying something exists, yeah. 
you know? It's like, hey, there's a red engine light, you know, your temperature gauge, I've said this before, your oil light's on in your car. Don't put a piece of black tape over it and then keep driving. You see, hey, you know what? There's a problem. Let's see if we can fix it. Don't pretend it's not there, you know? And that's what these dumbasses, these useful idiots like Morton's The Steakhouse is doing, <laughs> okay? And I just got to say, it pisses me off, especially when they cannot stand up to reason. And the first thing they do when you show them an article from the Chinese government is block you. Yeah. You know what I mean? True. It's very simple. Anyway. All right, let's keep this rolling. Let's do it. Okay. Um, you don't need to play this again, do you? No, I just wanted to put that up there once more for people to see what an, a useful idiot looks like. Yeah, good point. Useful idiot who doesn't even listen to his own masters. No. Okay, guys. <laughs> Morton, here's a who. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's go. go. <laughs> well, I mean, we're going to go, but the problem is we've got nothing left in the media oh, pack. you sure? So, yeah, there's nothing left. Mm, I disagree with that. Go you want to you wanna see? You yeah. want to see? Yes. Oh, you're right. All right, cool. <laughs> Let us move on to our Q&A called Yamcha. Yeah, so we're going to skip Worldview today. Actually, one of those was Worldview. Which one? Just out of order. Oh, really? Yeah. I'm just going to throw that in there, though. This is Worldview, which you, where you get to hear what's going on in the world, with spe specifically with regards to China, and we did that already, so. Yeah, so you guys got the intro a little bit late. Yeah, so. And that's fine. It's time for our Q&A, guys. Yamcha, yes. this is where we uh, answer your questions and you question our answers. A little bit discombobulated today. For some reason. Well, Don't know, you know why. We prepared so well, but, you know, that's just... We got a lot of good material today. That's how it goes. That's great. Um, guys, we're going to answer your super chats. If yes. you're watching live, you get to watch this part. If you're watching over the weekend, you get to watch this part. But we cut it out <laughs> on Mondays. Um, so if you're not watching live and if you're not watching on the weekend, stay awesome. We'll see you next time. But remember, if you are a patron, even the lowest tier, you get to watch the full episodes whenever you want. We upload the full thing up there. Cool. I was just...